The Rundown. It's September 24th, and it is brought to you by our friends at DraftKings. Let me tell you, Billy Football, you can get a TD, a tutty, taking it to the house for six, whatever you want to call a touchdown. There's one thing for sure. Touchdowns matter more at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. On the ground or in the air from special teams or defense, we don't care how they score them. We just want to bet on touchdowns. And DraftKings Sportsbook is delivering. Ready to place your first bet? Try betting on something simple, Billy, like picking a player to score a touchdown or how many TDs will be in the game. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app and make your pick. Ready to do a touchdown dance, Pat? Now DraftKings customers can bet $5 to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Ooh. You can score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one place to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code RUNDOWN. That's code RUNDOWN for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets when you bet only, stop biting your thumb, only five bucks. Only on DraftKings, the crown is yours. Great read, Nate. Thank you. Great job. That was dope. Thank you so much. That was lit. Uh, speaking of touchdowns, Monday Night Football last night, Jaden Daniels, uh, welcome to the NFL party. He went 21 for 23 for 254 yards, two touchdowns, and then another 39 on the ground and one rushing touchdown. It was a very fun week to be me as a commies fan. Um, you're, a, you're just a football guy, Billy. Yeah. You named yourself after the sport. And I, Pat, I actually didn't come up with the name. Who did? Big Cat. Ah. Uh, so, yeah, Jaden Daniels, unbelievable game last night on Monday Night Football in Cincinnati. So, first, earlier in the week, uh, the Bengals cornerback Cam Taylor Britt said the Bengals don't really run a professional offense. He was taking jabs at Jaden Daniels, saying he doesn't really do much out there. He said the playbook is a college playbook. And then he got immediately burned by Terry McLaurin. Uh, pretty much all game. Not great for him. His coach, Zach Taylor, kind of snapped on him after the game. He's like, we don't do that. And then what else happened? Um, this guy on the Bengals post game show said Jaden is not that good. So I'd like your take on this. No, dude. So Jaden, like, there were times where he was going with like more basic concepts earlier in the year because he's just coming onto the NFL right. scene. Like he's processing crazy defenses he's never seen. Jaden's one of these guys who like, it's kind of crazy. He did win the Heisman. He was drafted second. Second. Overall. So like, like it's Caleb, Jaden, Drake. It's not like everyone was overlooking him, but he is one of these guys that is going to translate because he is a baller. Yeah, so like he 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 like is a strategic passer. He doesn't over uh, compensate with his mobility, with his legs, and he's like, as we saw, has made it to the next level. But the Bengals do suck terribly. Counterpoint: They held Mahomes to 158 yards last week. Then last night. Mm. Jaden Daniels carved them up like a Thanksgiving turkey. Right. Counter counterpoint, the Chiefs' run game was the main concentration of their game plan. For that. Counter counter counterpoint, you can't be the guy after a generational performance. He completed ninety percent of his passes. He's an eighty huh. percent passing quarterback for the entire season. You can't be the guy who has whose one soundbite is Jaden's not that good. You just can't be that guy. He was on the Bengals and said that after the, the post game guy for the Bengals network. All of Chicago was praying Caleb Williams would have one game like this, and Jay well, you you nailed it earlier. Like yeah. we eased Jaden into the NFL, doing yeah. very limited, very limited. They they were open about it. Cliff right. Kingsbury was open about it. It was like very limited playbook. They're slowly opening it up. Yeah, Caleb, it looks like was just thrown to the wolves with the worst offensive line of all time, and he was asked to do things he shouldn't have been asked to do. I mean, there was a Tom Brady clip, I forget from what podcast it was, about how the NFL isn't letting rookie quarterbacks develop. Yeah. And, like, Patrick Mahomes, you know, that. he's one of these mobile guys who makes great throws, a little more running gun. He was allowed to sit behind Alex Smith for a while and, you know, gave him the confidence to that yep. when he finally got in, he had a whole year of studying the playbook, understanding Aaron concepts. Aaron Rodgers sat. Yeah. Jordan Love sat. Why don't we sit more guys? Because they just, it's so, my take is this. It's so, and we'll see it. The next topic is Trevor Lawrence. It's yeah. so hard to be a quarterback in the NFL. They just want to see if you got it or don't got it. And then they'll just take the next guy. What they're forgetting though, what you said is, maybe just, these guys are really good. The NFL is just yeah. really hard. Maybe give them a little bit of time. Like for example, Andy Dalton 
you know, guy who's been in the league for a really long time. He gets out there, balls out for Carolina. Bryce Young, you know, may suck. Or he may just need more time. Well, people thought Justin Fields sucked. Now he's balling. Now look at Sam Darnold. He's yep. balling against his former team. You it, know, it takes a lot of quarterbacks a lot more time, maybe than it, I think the NFL is just so much harder now than what it used to be. Also, I think it allows coaches to get more time yeah. to fail. If you get, draft a new quarterback, like oh, you get a second chance. Like if you start that quarterback, you know, or you don't, it just gives you more time to get more money. Yeah. And at the end of the day, capitalism runs this world. There you so go. if you just there keep if you keep drafting new quarterbacks, then you just keep getting more time to like fuck up, and then you can just blame yeah. your new quarterback. If I'm the Bears, I'm not panicking about Caleb. You know. He still has plenty of time. He's still 21 years old. If I'm the Patriots, I don't let Drake May see the field at all this year. Yeah, I don't know why they put him in against the Jets. That was ridiculous, that was yeah. terrible. Even though it was garbage time, whatever, yeah. just why even do it? I mean, it almost looks like they want to show that they're doing something. But you got to get – you got to let him go down. I feel bad shit. for Bears fans. They're in hell this morning because Caleb kind of looks like he stinks, but it's not his fault that Jaden's so good. Like, Caleb could still be good. They're mm-hmm. always going to be compared because they went 1-2 in the draft. I think it's it's – Unfortunate. Also, Caleb cried in his mom's arms after losing one college football game. Neither here nor there. Uh, the thing is, you don't do stuff like paint your nails because then when you get in these tough positions, they all paint at your pointed nails. Yeah, even if it has nothing to do with your exactly. performance. It's like, oh, he was too busy painting his nails and not watching tape. Yeah, It's, like, I mean, it's so easy to say. I, I actually called this on Macrosing a year ago and got literally crucified for it, but now everyone's doing you it. got fired for it. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Max, <laughs> you did get Pull fired. Pull up that clip. After. <laughs> uh, Not for part of my take, Tra- <laughs> which is a misconception that's weirdly getting passed around. Trevor Lawrence, that, he was the other Monday night game last night. Um, people are calling him a bust at this point. He's lost his last eight starts. Is he? Does he have like the h- biggest contract? He's like? just signed five years, 275 mil. Okay, and he's and awful. he's lost his last eight starts in Jacksonville. Uh, it, he his stats are terrible. He's completing barely fifty. Can you scroll down a little bit? Yeah. He's completing fifty-two percent of his passes. He's twenty-eighth in touchdown he? percentage. He's young. He's still in it. All right. So uh, he's like twenty-six. Yeah. Twenty-seven. He, so he was like the uh, and Matt knows he was like a phenom. You, know, you heard about him in high school. Still only twenty-four. Oh, she's he's younger than me. Young. Yeah, yeah, he's 24 years old. So this is now his make or break it because this was a take I had way when he got drafted. He's always been on sick teams with tons of talent around him. Okay. So like he was on a high school team that never lost, which was a powerhouse high school. He was on a college team, Clemson, which had tons of weapons, great coach, great winning culture. They did lose games, but... You know, it was pretty easy he for He won him. a national champion. He yeah. started as a freshman from day one. Yeah. He was anointed, like, the best thing since Peyton Manning. He's going to yeah. be at a Hall of Famer, blah, 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 blah. If he, d- you know, and then when you get to the NFL and you get thrown on these shitty teams and you have to deal with adversity and bringing up the level of play of all the players around you, and that's something that great quarterbacks do. Like, any good quarterback can go into a great, uh, you know, team with great players around them and just be good. But if you can be a guy that can bring up all the talent around you, that's what separates like the Tom Brady's. That's what separates even like the Andy Daltons, who just like brought just up all the do level it of play. Twenty four years. Yeah, old. he's been he's been starting every game for so long. He understands how to be a quarterback. Like he understands how. Him. He's a guy who I feel like like he obviously was like very good like before like he had his little slump here. I feel like he was hyped up a lot because of the way he looked. I was saying, people were calling people him. People liked that he looked like Sunshine from Remember yes. the Titans. So that added that much more fuel to the fire. Mm-hmm. Like, if he was a gross-looking NFL quarterback, he wouldn't be getting one one-hundredth of people the People were calling him Daniel Jones with long hair. You know what I would do if I was him? I'd cut the hair. There be like, go. I would too. Look, we're, we're grinding. Like, it's like, like when a wrestler needs a gimmick change yeah. in, the, in wrestling. No, but he needs he WWE. needs to change, and he needs to show that, hey, I'm ready to grind it out. It's not pretty boy slinging but, it. I mean, if you watched the Bills last night, one, well, okay, Trevor Lawrence threw the worst ball of all time. It was intercepted by DeMar Hanlon, which was very funny. Yes. Um, two, Josh Allen is extremely good at Oh, Josh, you know, you know how many bets I won off of Josh Allen last night? Like, on the DraftKings Sportsbook? On the DraftKings Sportsbook, I can read them. It was like no, two-plus okay. passing touchdowns. Like two plus uh, yeah. anytime touchdowns. The, the Bills insane. look like Super Bowl favorites right now. 
Uh, I, and Trevor Lawrence was seeing ghosts. And, and Doug Peterson should be fired. If he's not fired by the time yeah. this rundown airs, that's a mistake. Dude, here's the thing. He's 24 years old. He's having a bad season and a half. No, but he, it, he's, it, he was he bad. Has this- time, like you're talking about giving people time in the NFL. He's putting in time now. Sure. It's not all going to be sunshine and roses. Call back to sunshine. Yeah. He's 24 years old. Imagine, he's not going to be with this team forever. Imagine in five years, how much, if he's honing his skills on shitty teams, how much better he's going to be if he's surrounded by so, weapons. All right. I, I, now is, that's okay. sports talk. You're, I can do it all. You're buying his stock low. Yes. Yes. But the thing is, they don't. He's your Nvidia. Like you're, you're, right. you're big. One. The thing is, you're those quarterbacks don't get many chances. Like four years down the line, three years down the line, because they're going to pick up some new kid who's going to fail just like this guy. Like, it's like hey, the craziest you, thing you, coaches you do. Sam, Sam Darnold. Darnold. Baker, yeah. Baker. Well, when you're like a Baker, franchise, Baker, guy, Baker, when you're a franchise guy, guy like this, you do. I feel like he's already been branded as like this is a guy who was yeah. really good. So another team will give him a shot, and he can just use the excuse that he had no weapons. He, on this he reminds team. me of Kirk Cousins. Like he's going to start in the NFL for like 15 years, and he's always no. just going to be an average quarterback. No, no, because he, Kirk Cousins has like the decisive like playmaking, like in the pocket playmaking ability that like. Teams love and will pay. That's why he's like the highest paying. Paid you know I'm saying like over the whole career. Trevor Lawrence will not be a career backup. He will bounce around starting if he doesn't figure it out. He'll still start if he cuts his hair. If he cuts his hair. Yeah. What are you looking at, Pat? I think he's too light in the hair. Someone sent me something really important. We replying to text? Nope. Okay. Uh, uh, Pat's phone is brought to you by Stella Blue. This rundown is brought to you by Stella Blue. Football season is back, and there's no better way to celebrate than with Stella Blue's new fall collection. I appreciate that they got rid of the summer read and they gave us the fall one. Oh. Whether you're tailgating in the crisp autumn air or cheering from the comfort of your couch pat, the new maple pumpkin pie and apple crumb cake blends are the mm. ultimate game day companions. The maple pumpkin pie delivers a combination of creamy classic pumpkin pie with buttery pie crust and a touch of sweet maple syrup, while the apple crumb cake Features delicious flavors of sweet apple, cinnamon, and brown sugar, all wrapped in a rich, buttery crumb finish. Available in both ground coffee and K-cup varieties, these seasonal flavors will fit seamlessly into your coffee routine. How do you get it, Billy Football? I'm so glad you asked. You can get uh, Stella Blue Coffee's limited fall flavors at StellaBlueCoffee.com or on Amazon. But let me tell you, if you use promo code RUNDOWN, you can get 20% off any order of $25 or more when you buy it on StellaBlueCoffee.com. So while you can buy it on Amazon, you should go to StellaBlueCoffee.com and use code RUNDOWN, Rundown. there you go, uh, to get 20% off your order of $25 or more. Make every game day a victory this fall. Amtrak announces a 48-hour one-way trip from Chicago to Miami, which made me laugh because everybody, like, you know, every six months that all guys want is one thing. Tweet goes viral, and it's the high-speed rail. And uh, Amtrak instead gave us a 48-hour one-way trip from Chicago to Miami, which uh, it takes 21 hours to drive or three hours <laughs> to fly. But they said, no, we'll do the driving and flying for you. Didn't Coley Mick once take a train to Georgia from here because so he didn't Coley, want to fly? Coley pretended he couldn't fly for a while. And so he took yeah he took a train to the NBA All Star. He did game. pretend he couldn't fly. I no. remember that. Yeah, he said he does. He said he was trying to like say that he didn't trust aviation. I don't know what. He's like, there's a metal tube in the sky, and how could you ever trust that? I don't know because it's Dude, a proven did thing. He, did he have uh, what's it called? Vertigo. 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 Yeah. But how does that affect you in a pa- fucking plane? I don't know. I will say I I think he was just I think he was just going through it. Uh, he did pass out. They went to interview someone on Sirius XM, and the oh. the studio was like on the seventieth floor, and he looked out the window and like. I want to know. Do we know how much tickets are for this? Because this could I, be a good party train. Like if you're, no, in, dude. If you're in spring break, even if you're in spring break in the Northeast, and you can yeah. pick this up connecting in DC, maybe take a Northeast regional down to DC. You hop on with five or six buddies. No, you hit three or four stops Thanks. on the way. The beers, the cafe cart. Oh my yeah. god! But being stuck in a car in a seat. While drunk, but I think they have beds. Oh. I think they have like big beds and what, like you're sleeper rooms. Sleeping and stuff. with the homies, no, like dude, what do you? I don't get ideally, it. Ideally, the bar, the bar car gets like rowdy. Have you ever? I take the train often to DC. Yeah, How long is that? Like two hours? Go, it's like three, sick? three and a half. And I'll tell you what, like it feels like forever. Oh, one of the mo- one it. of the most drunk I have ever been in my life. Period was on a train from New York City to Providence with the Wonton Don and Smitty, uh. and we sat in the cafe car. 
for four hours and drank Blue Moon beers. Ooh. And I think I had about 10 of them. And I hopped off and I could barely walk. My mother was, my sweet mother was picking me up and she was like, what is wrong with you? I could barely walk. I was hungover for three days. Dude. So I couldn't imagine two full days of drinking with no hangover care. Three three years in a row, I've gotten trapped on the Amtrak back from Philadelphia from a PLL event to New York, and uh, the car just stops mm-hmm. at like like eleven p.m. somewhere in New Jersey, and like you can't get off. Can't get off, and you just get. You ever had one where they have to replace the engine on a train? I've sat on an Amtrak. Like you're, they're like we're getting a new yeah. engine, so yeah. the whole front car they take yep. off. I'm actually all for this. So there's a map on TikTok that shows. It's probably sure it's all over. It shows like where abandoned railroads are in the United States. And it's it looks like a spider web, like the map. Yeah. And how much we've just completely abandoned using railroads. If yeah. they could expand this to like everywhere and make it somewhat affordable. But just make it high speed. But is, isn't it high? Two, I feel like two this, days is high speed. This is a normal Amp. No. no okay, no, no, here no. you go. This is a normal Amtrak train. Dude, check out some. Look at all these abandoned railroads. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. Dude, check out some of those ones in China. They can do like basically the equivalent of New York to LA and like. I think, isn't yeah. Elon trying to do that what, LA to Vegas? He's building like yeah. a tunnel. That should, that I feel cars? like that should be take like a month to complete. <laughs> LA to Vegas? No. Literally, he, it's like a five hour drive. You can't yeah. make that shit fucking happen. That was like the boring company was doing that. Wait, that got scrapped? I think it got scrapped because he got caught up go. with space. <laughs> yeah. He got distracted by space. He got distracted space. by space. But check check out like don't how- even get me going on the whole space travel bullshit oh, that we're going. I, on I'm right pro space travel. I'm more uh, pro Earth travel. Like make yes. Earth. I my big take the Billy. You might need to do some yeah. research for me. Do, when you're plant city planners, and let's uh-huh. use New York City as an example. All right. So I already do, know the problems with so what you're saying. Do, is there an infinite number of cars they will let in? Or at some point, are they going to have to say, we're just a little island. Like, we're out of space for cars. We can't what let mean, cars that people drive in? Because I feel like if you take an Uber at any time or just walk down the street, it's gridlock traffic on every avenue that's every true. hour of the day in New York City. That's not true. It's mostly true. The, you got to remember cars are leaving, too. Yeah, there's people are going. Yeah, but at some point, as an island, do they have to be like, we're out of space? There's just they are. They're doing people. congestion trafficking. But they got rid of that, too. Oh. That's because they knew they couldn't fucking do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but basically, with the flow of traffic, they more likely will increase lanes on stuff so that it can accommodate more cars coming in and out. Whereas, like, they put in the West Side Highway, they put in the FDR Drive, like, those were all things they did. Like, we might actually expand that out more and put more They're talking the river. down by uh, Battery Park, like, down there, they're literally talking about just adding on to Manhattan. Yeah, they've been doing this for so oh, just growing actually, Manhattan? Actually, mm-hmm. look, yeah. look up Manhattan original coastline. We've actually built out, and actually, this happens a lot. This is, like, a fascinating topic that my nerd brain's coming out on. Like, they literally, like, shape cities by dumping ballast from boats. So, like, this is what it used to look like. Like, like back before Europeans arrived. Oh, so like Seaport was just like yeah, they just it was a beach. They filled it, all of it in with like rocks and ballast and stuff from like mining activity what from up the Hudson. Ballast, ballast is uh, stuff they put in boats that don't have any cargo, so that they uh, sit lower in the water and are more um, so they don't flip over Got basically. It. Like weight. Yeah. Um, I still don't know what it means, but I'll take your word for it. Yeah. So yeah, they, it might extend all the way out to there. New York might get a yeah. big hanging. I also don't that's not what we, we need less. <laughs> we need less people, not more people. I don't understand. How, like, or have we not run out of room here yet? That's what I keep saying. But, they but keep not, building, they no, but keep not with building. traffic. I'm saying like in no general, building, yeah. like oh, building, building up. Like, are we fucking out of room here? Like, enough is enough with the construction. They've been doing construction on this building that we are in in. for five years. Oh, well, you know what it is. And I look outside, and all they do is raise and lower buckets of shit. That's all they do. Well, that has to do with the unions and the health. Well, no, it has to do with the scaffolding unions in that the building department requires your building to go under search for bricks and stuff, like, every... Every five years. The thing is, it's safer to just have the scaffolding up so a brick doesn't fall and kill somebody, and everyone cashes in. I would love to own a scaffolding company. Oh my you God. just have a city contract. I think there was something on like yeah. Nat Geo about I that. Think There's that's... like three companies that do yeah. all the scaffolding oh, yeah. in New York City. I assume they're all billionaires. They're, they're all just family owned, paisan, fucking whatever. Well, Guys, yeah. from 52.5 Queens. billion there you go. is what the scaffolding market. Yep. One company was valued at. So this is this is where wow. like 
you know, the mob went legal, like they're like, we don't have to like run drugs or anything. We just got to take care of these very lucrative, like Scaffolding deals, like deals that we can ensure that our political networking, like Bro, let's we always get, get the, the global scaffolding market was eight hundred and seventy billion. Oh, that sounds billion? low with how much scaffolding. No, eight hundred seventy million. I don't know what that number is. Eight seven. Yeah, so eight point seven billion. billion. Got it. Yeah. yeah. No, that. Yeah. Those are fake yeah. numbers. Yeah, they are. Yeah, it's not fake. That's too big to quantify. But it is. Like, I don't like it. The scaffolding. Oh, it's ugly. I don't. I hate it when I walk out. But some of the nice, like Jeff Bezos has a place on Madison Avenue. Okay. And the scaffolding out. It's very well known. The scaffolding by his building. He didn't like. So he hired this company to put in this really beautiful, ritzy, white scaffolding with arches and beautiful LED lights. And so now, a bunch of these high-end buildings, like you're like illuminated under this beautiful scaffolding because huh. you don't have crap like this. Wait, can we look that up? Jeff Bezos scaffolding? Because that's, that's genius. High-end scaffolding. Yeah, I didn't think about that. That is something we should get into. Huh. The well... Picture. Where is that? But the thing is, it does prevent a lot of these loose bricks and some of these old buildings yeah. fall. How often does that happen? It, so it, it happens, happens, it happens once. And and name it, name so, one New Yorker that wouldn't like to get so, smoked in the head by a brick. Well, no, but that's right. Pat, here's what happened. In like 1992, it did happen. Someone died, and then they passed this, it's called like Local Law 46 or something, where yeah. a building over eight floors has to be inspected every five years. Yeah. So uh, my old apartment building, I moved in mostly because I liked the roof. Two months after I moved in, we were up for it. Roof yeah. was closed the rest of the time I lived there. <laughs> that sucks. Jeez. Yeah, something for people to ask before you move into a building, or do we, are we gonna get closed down? And then like you have people repelling outside your yeah. window the entire time. Also, I'm looking for an apartment now, and the realtor who I'm using is like, do yourself a favor, wait till after the election, because prices are going to, <laughs> after the election, word to the wise. If you're looking for an apartment in New York City, mm. wait. Interesting. The depends. <laughs> depends. But you know what's crazy? The Eastern Seaboard Megalopolis. Oh. This is, no, this is actually one of the most fascinating <laughs> things ever. You know, and speaking of Amtrak, this is why Amtrak conducts its best work. So look at the Eastern Seaboard Megalopolis. Well, Amtrak is subsidized by the government and loses money every year, despite ticket prices. Despite how many crazy. beers people buy. Yeah. So it's basically, the United States could probably only support uh, the population density of the eastern uh, seaboard megalopolis. So, like, right there is about, I want to say, a hundred, I want to say, like, 50 million people. Okay. Is just in that area from Washington, D.C. up to Boston, up to kind of Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. So, that's like where the majority, like, that's a third of the U.S. population right in there. And All libs. It's basically the largest city structure. In, in so you're saying the Earth itself physically can't support it, or what are you saying? No, no, the Earth, no. If the United States, we were talking about running out of space, uh, like that you. would be the population density of that we could fit in the entire United States. I always think about that when I'm flying over. But like, the thing the is, Midwest. China we have plenty all of space. All of China, we have like so that. much space. Yeah, we have too much. Space. No, but the thing is, yeah. China's all of China is that uh, population density, even probably more. Ugh. Let's see what China megalopolis has. I mean, listen, we. I you mean, know how many places the size of Philadelphia China has? Like, forty. I mean, this is what people aren't talking about. It's crazy. So uh, we after, have three <laughs> megalopolises. <laughs> after show, I don't have Fuck. anything. After show is megalopolis talk. So how many megalopolises do they have, dude? We we're getting out. Mega. So megalopolis we is are literally mega. just a word could, for really, a number of people. It, could Bezos? No, no, it's a word for so just I have a question. suburban and urban. Could crawl. Bezos go into Wyoming and build a megalopolis? Well, that's what they're doing in Saudi Arabia. Check out the line. Yeah, oh, we know what the line is. Oh, yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what they're yeah. doing with the farmland in New Mexico and Arizona, what Saudi Arabia is doing with that? Oh, they bought it all. Brother, check it out. They're running the wells dry out there and locals are like pissed like all our water is going away our crops are going away and it's because saudi arabia is buying up arid desert land drilling for water and they're going to try and control the food source all right we'll take that well, out well i mean yeah. i mean look sometimes the facts hit the smart people first <laughs> Preach. Okay, anything else uh follow out and about yeah out and about new episode comes uh new episode is out today with 
Oh, you guys are actually gonna like this. It was one of the craziest conversations. There's a show called The The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives yep. on Hulu. It's the number one show. You know what it is. These ladies are so insanely just like unfiltered. It's like the housewives on steroids. So Joey and I just had a completely unfiltered conversation asking them anything we've ever wanted to know about like the Mormon religion. Uh -huh. And it was fascinating. Okay. Check it out. And actually don't even check it out. Just subscribe and <laughs> listen for 30 seconds. That way we get- Help the algo. Yeah. Help the algo. Do that for audio crack as well. That's C-R-A-I-C. But yeah, mostly out and about in them. Yeah, <laughs> audio C-R-A-I-C. Yes, crack, yeah. uh, Irish word. What's yes. the crack? Yeah. Great crack. Today we had Throw God on, completely unhinged. Throat God? Throat God. Throw God. Oh. He has to change his name. That's way too close to Throat God. I know. God. I mean, that's on him. That's all we got. That's the rundown.